immunization and vaccines. So these are the 2020, I know it's a very um, tiny slide, um, the, the print is tiny, but um, these are the 2024 um, recommended adult immunization schedules um, as recommended by the uh, CDC and the Department of Health. Um, I will go into them in more detail. So immunizations that are recommended for most adults, but again, our topic is for older adults, is hepatitis A. So adults um, are recommended to have two to three doses um, at least six to 18 months apart, depending on the vaccine type. We're also recommending to, for us, uh, for our patients, for our older adults, to have an influenza vaccine, which is recommended for all adults starting at age 18 up and older um, every year. So every year there's a new vaccine strain, um, that comes out um, and we're recommending our patients, to our, our community residents also, to get an influenza vaccine every year. So this is for prevention. You want to get it before you actually become ill to prevent you from getting um, the flu or prevent you from getting hepatitis A or any of the other vaccines I'm going to discuss. Hepatitis B is um, two to three doses uh, also four to four weeks, four to six weeks apart, um, and again depending on the type, which is the brand, depending on the brand, um, tetanus diphtheria vaccine, and that is every year, every ten years. I'm sorry, starting at age um, 18, um, a pneumococcal vaccine, um, starting at age 65 and older, and um, a tetanus vaccine, um, different types. So the first one was for pertussis which most children get, and this is a TD, which is most adults get going on as, as you age every 10 years. Um, and there's two different kinds of um, the, the pneumococcal vaccine. Um, measles, mumps, and rubella, which we got as children, we got a first shot as, as infants, but we need to get, um, we're now recommending titers as you get older. Some adults, depending on when they draw your blood test, they may not see levels in your blood, and it's recommended to get what's, what are called booster shots, um, and that, um, those are one to two doses um, for older adults. Um, men meningococcal or meningitis vaccine, that starts uh, about 16 years old, we usually recommend it for, um, younger adults in, uh, that are in school, but also recommended for older adults. And that's one to two doses, um, plus a booster shot um, every five years. Um, varicella or chickenpox vaccine, again, we get those starting as infants, but it's also recommended as you get older, as sometimes the titers um, are not still there, the protection is not still there, and it's recommended the starting, as, again, as infants, but also rec recommended for older adults, and that's two vaccines um, four to eight weeks apart. There is um, Haemophilus influenza vaccine, again, also given as infants, but again, boosters or um, additional doses are, are recommended as, as we age, as older adults, as adults age. Um, herpes zoster vaccine. So when we get chicken pox as adults, even after we recover, the virus stays in our system. And as we get age, we get older, our immunity is not as strong as when we were younger. And that chicken pox may come back, but it comes back in a different form. It's called herpes zoster. And it's very painful um, vesicles, bumps, that come along um, in, in different areas of your body. So it's, it's very painful, as I said, it's very disabling. So we, there's a vaccine to prevent that from happening. Um, as we age, and that's recommended for adults starting at age 50, um, and that's two doses um, every, I think every, about th three to six months apart. HPV vaccine, again, recommended for younger, uh, to start as a younger adult um, and, and teenagers um, or younger, with children about 12 years of age, and this is for, to prevent males and females, and this is to prevent from getting um, what's called genital warts, again, another painful, um, illness when it does um, erupt or when it does uh, happen or manifest itself. Um, and that's recommended starting between age nine. Uh, and there are two doses, six, month apart, six months apart. But as we age, as I said, sometimes our immunity um, is not as strong. And the vaccines that we, we, got, we received as children, the illness may actually manifest later on in life because our immunity, our body's ability to, to block it is, is decreased. Um, so that's uh, given four weeks apart, um, 
and as is, again, it's for males and females, not only for females. So these vaccines that I am presenting are not only for one per one gender, it's for both genders. Um, and of course, there's uh, COVID-19, which we um, started being aware of back in 19, 2020, so that there's now a vaccine for that, thankfully. Um, and it's again for males and females, um, starting at six months. So uh, babies at six months could get their first vaccine, and it continues through um, throughout the ages as we age. Um, and now, even if you did receive COVID vaccine back when um, the infection was more prevalent, more increased, you're now recommended to get booster vaccines. And the recommendation is still to get a booster vaccine, just like the influenza vaccine. It's recommended to get that every year. So, and there in the works is a actually combination vaccine of the um, influenza with the COVID-19 um, uh, virus. So that is also recommended. Um, starting maybe two years ago, we uh, were also advised now that there's called respir um, RSV, which does affect, affect mainly children. But again, as our immunity decreases, it's also affecting older adults, it's a um, respiratory or lung infection. So there is a vaccine to prevent that or, or to prevent the bad effects from if you do get that. Um, but prevention is always better than cure. So it's, be it's recommended to get it before you actually need it, and that's starting at age 60. And of course, um, as I said, the COVID va um, vaccine, um, then boosters, um, there is always being um, updated and always being um, advanced, the, the, um, the com combination the, of, the, of the medication that you're given. Um, so as keep an ear out or keep um, you know, being abreast of what's happening in the healthcare field and definitely stay up to date on your immunity and vaccines. So um, adults at highest risk for the RSV include older adults. As I said, as we age, um, our immunity is not as strong and to ward off and prevent um, different infections, even if we did receive the vaccines when we were older. So adults with chronic um, heart or lung diseases or any other chronic diseases like hypertension, high blood pressure, heart disease, um, th we, those adults are recommended to definitely receive the RSV vaccine. Um, adults with weakened immune system, so if you already have an underlying illness that weakens your immune system, like um, HIV, then definitely you're recommended to receive this um, bootless um, vaccine. Um, adults with certain other underlying medical conditions, and as I said, it varies, um, having any of the triad, as I call it, the high blood pressure, the high cholesterol, or the diabetes, actually does um, weaken your immune system, so you are among those adults that are recommended to get this. this. Um, and symptoms of RSV infection usually include runny nose. It's like getting a common cold. Sometimes you think you have the cold, but then it progresses and becomes more severe and more serious. And again, getting the vaccine prevents you from, having, from ending up in a hospital in, say, in an ICU um, intensive care unit. Um, coughing, sneezing, fever, and wheezing. So if any of these happen and you never had it before, and it came on suddenly or gradually, definitely follow up with your healthcare provider. These symptoms usually appear in stages and not all at once. And people infected with RSV are usually contagious three to eight days before any of these symptoms happen. So you could have gone to a gathering, gone to an outing, somebody there could have had RSV. They may not know they had RSV and you're exposed because symptoms don't happen, um, start happening uh, until three to eight days after you're actually infected. So it's not that the person, you know, had it and came to the party and now you're infected. So this is another slide um, uh, basically saying what I um, presented before, that older adults are at high risk for severe RSV um, illness. Um, and each year it causes um, serious illness in older adults and 60,000 to 160,000 hospitalizations and 6,000 to 10,000 deaths. So you can can pass away from uh, having RSV, influenza back, um, infection, you could actually die from the flu. Um, any of the other illnesses that I presented that have a vaccine associated, you could actually die depending on your underlying health condition or de decreased immunity. Vaccine um, for these groups is adults, older adults, age 60 and older, you get two vaccines 
Um, those are the names, the brand names. I may, there may be others, but those are the ones I'm aware of and that was in the literature. Have been licensed by the Food and Drug Administration and recommended by the, the Centers for Disease um, Control for adults age 60 and older. So for older adults, they're recommended um, to start, starting at age 60 to get this um, vaccine um, and, use, and using shared clinical decision making. So again, although it's saying 60 years old, it's not a hard and fast 60s. Again, if you have underlying health conditions or you have chronic health conditions, so you've had them for a while that decrease your immunity or cause a lot of illnesses, um, then you may, you're, depending on what you and your healthcare provider discuss, you may actually be recommended to get this vaccine even before age 60. Pregnant women of, um, also, uh, to protect them and for, to protect the, the baby that's developing, um, and infants and some, of course, young children, because that is actually where the, vac the virus first um, started happening is uh, among children and, and young um, babies. And it was very, very serious. A lot of children actually did die. The, the flu vaccine, which comes out every year, um, is also definitely recommended. Um, and it's, again, starting at six months, babies do actually get the flu vaccines. Um, again, prevention is better than cure. You want to prevent it from happening at all. And, and then if you do actually end up with it, unfortunately, um, the cure may be more complicated. So that's why we're trying to prevent it before you actually end up contracting the flu. So the flu is actually still recommended every year. Well, it is usually an announcement on the radio. Um, the flu season or the flu prevention season usually starts at the beginning of the fall, like right after the summer in September, October. That's when you're recommended to get your flu vaccine so that it's in your system and, and working. Um, by the time the flu season actually starts. So that's why we don't wait until you have the flu to take the vaccine, because then it takes a little longer to work. Um, the recommended timing for vaccine is the same as the last year, the same as last year. It's usually the same every year. Um, but they, there are usually changes in the flu vaccine from one year to the next, um, and I will discuss that going forward. Most people um, need only one dose of the, um, for the season. And as I said, between September and October is usually the perfect time to get it before the flu season actually starts.